You ever try to sit here waiting for a song to like beat drop? And it doesn't beat drop? And you ever notice how your webcam is ever so slightly disconnected from what you're saying? That's me today. I'm actually glad the webcam works though. I didn't think it would. Anyway, happy, uh, it's May 20th when I'm recording this, so happy almost E3. It's a couple of weeks out and leaks are flying fast and furious, so I guess now is as good a time as any to uh, start talking about, you know, what we hope to see at E3. Let me put my mouse down here, scroll on up. All right, let's begin. Here is 10 things that I think we're going to see from Nintendo at E3. This is stuff I actually think we're going to see. Before we begin, though, a uh, little note. I don't know if you know this. I didn't know this until I saw a video from uh, Arlo over on YouTube. But apparently Nintendo is getting a new president in June. I'm going to butcher the name here, but... Uh, uh, I believe it's uh, the current president is Tatsumi Kimishima, if I'm correct. I'm, like, I'm almost certainly correct. I have it written down my notes here. That's what I'm staring at. But uh, he announced at the end of April at Nintendo's investor call that uh, he is going to be stepping down in June and being replaced by Shintaro Furukawa. Fru Furukawa? I'm, gonna, I'm probably never going to say his name again after that, but here I go saying it. Furukawa, he actually... Interesting little side fact here. He's been the outside director for Pokemon Company since 2012, which, if that sounds familiar, it's because Kimishima worked in, I believe it was the financials department for the Pokemon Company, back during the gold and silver run of the company. So, just side fact, I guess Pokemon Company is a pipeline for Nintendo directors. Anyway, Furukawa also, perhaps more famously, worked on the immensely popular Switch marketing plan, which probably part of the reason why he ended up getting this job. Also of particular note is he speaks English, unlike Kimishima, which means between his work on marketing and his ability to speak English, I'd say expect to see him kick off the director this year instead of uh, Koizumi-san, who has basically been the face of Nintendo Directs for the entire Switch era so far. I mean, with that out of the way, first thing the obvious thing that I expect we'll see from Nintendo at E3, Smash. They've already announced that they are going to be talking about Smash, so this isn't really a surprise. I think we're going to get a new first party and a new third party fighter revealed via their E3 Direct trailer. I think, probably not directly, but I think over the course of E3, between the trailer and their demos at... They'll never really have a demo, probably first thing at Treehouse. And the Invitational will probably get most, if not all, of those silhouetted fighters from the Splatoon reveal trailer announced. So all, like, I think it's like 12 fighters. Probably have 15 fighters available for the Invitational. And speaking of the Invitational, I don't think we're going to get many much in the way of new stages announced. I think that's going to be mostly Invitational. We'll probably have a list of, like, here's... Three new stages for our three new fighters, the Inklings, the Blank, and the Blank. These are our stages for the Invitational in their Omega form, which I imagine is going to return. And for release date, I think it's going to come either alongside Switch Online, or it's going to come in November. And I say two dates for a very important reason that we'll get into right away here with number two. It's time to talk about leaks. Last, uh, well, basically the last week, we got two major leaks that came out. Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu and Eevee versions, and Star Fox Grand Prix. Are they real? Probably, for different reasons. Pokemon Company has been basically going around hyping up Pikachu and Eevee, leading us into this announcement for several months now. Paul Ryan, not the politician, the guy from Pokeshopper, who's really cool. If you don't know Pokeshopper, I mean, they cover all the Pokemon products, like Slowpoke there. He'd be covered by Pokeshopper. They deal in all, you know, plushes and stuff. But he's looked at the Pokemon Japanese Instagram page and discovered it's basically been only hyping up three major product lines the last several weeks. We have the Easter Pikachu and Eevee, the Psycho Soda Pikachu and Eevee, and the only outlier from Pikachu and Eevee is a Kanto water route themed line. Yep, Pikachu, Eevee, and Kanto. Doesn't get much more uh, suspicious than that. 
And also, Junichi Masuda, the, you know, big director of Pokemon, he himself goes ahead and tweets out a picture of an Eevee plush, a Pikachu plush, Pikachu cosplaying Luigi, which, by the way, please let that be a hint that they're bringing back cosplay Pikachu. That was one of my favorite things from the uh, Gen 3 remakes. And also himself holding a Pokeball. I'm sure right now we've probably got the image up. We as in me, because I do my own editing. Anyway, I think this is definitely going to happen. I think it's coming this year, because I think next year is going to be the year for Gen 8. And it's probably, Gen 8's probably coming out next holiday season. It'll probably be announced next year in, like, April. And, by the way, if I'm itching my nose, it's because allergies are terrible. Worse since 1995 here. Sorry. Um, but, yeah, I think for release date for Gen 1, Pokemon Yellow remakes, probably going to release either alongside, alongside Switch Online or in November. Guess what? It's going to take whichever one of those that Smash doesn't take. As for Star Fox Grand Prix, this one was interesting to me because when I initially saw this leak, this name, I was like, this has to be a hoax. There's no way this is real. There's no way Nintendo would take probably their most controversial franchise that has been so inconsistent over so many years, basically since the last good Star Fox game, which was, in my opinion, Assault for the GameCube. It's been downright terrible. And now they take the game, they rip everything out of it, and they turn it into a racing game. And I'm like, there's no way this is real. This would be suicide for the franchise. This is Nintendo admitting Star Fox is dead. This is our last ditch effort. If it fails, we're just done with Star Fox. We're not even going to renew the trademark anymore. Then, however, yesterday I was eating dinner and I saw a report from Nintendo Life that apparently one of their insiders, a man by the name of Liam Robertson, came out and he basically said, yeah, this sounds like what I'm hearing from uh, Retro. And by the way, here's some more details on it. Apparently, according to Liam, there's going to be... Each Grand Prix consists of three tracks and then a boss battle. There'll be a hub world where you can interact with famous Star Fox characters, and apparently shooting is actually a mechanic. It's not just a straight up racing game. It's not a F-Zero style speed racer where you're going a bajillion miles an hour. No, it's essentially a racing on rail shooters. Shooter, which is, I think, interesting. It definitely has potential. I've never, I've never seen anything like it, but according to Nintendo Life, there was a game similar to it back on the PS2 whose name I don't have in front of me. But, uh, I'm willing to believe it. I, I missed something. Oh yeah, I didn't mention that the other thing was that you it has shooting. You can shoot enemies to get speed boosts, and you can also shoot players, which makes me very interested to see if they will import the destroying your opponents mechanic from F-Zero. I almost said Fire Emblem. You do destroy your opponents there, but that's a later point. Story-wise, because apparently the original League Four said there'll be a story mode akin to Diddy Kong Racing, I had this neat idea while I was taking a shower this morning. What if they go with, like, the solo angle? Not, like, playing solo, but Han Solo. You know, what if they go back and do a prequel about the founding of the new Star Fox? You know, you've got this dropped out of the Cornarian army I'm borrowing from. I think it's the comic book storyline here. Fox. He's like, he's just dropped out from the army and he gets into the racing scene and he's doing all this racing and he meets this hot shot rival of his called Falco and he's got his mechanic Slippy. And at the very end of it, they're doing all this racing and, you know, mercenary type things with their racing and all that. And maybe Wolf appears as like the big villain. And at the end, Peppy shows up. All battered and beaten and he says to Fox, Fox, your father's dead. And Fox decides then to take these allies he's made racing and formed the new Star Fox along with Peppy. And then it leads directly into another reboot of the SNES 64 and Zero storyline and all that fun stuff. That'd be cool, considering Zero was a terrible reboot. I'd like to see this as a fresh take on the franchise. Actually fresh. Not like, we're just gonna, you know, go back and retell the same story we've told like four times now. An actual fresh reboot. Anyway, I've talked way too much about this game now. Let's get into uh, some games that you might have forgotten about. Uh, number three here, Yoshi. That's all the name is right now. That's all we've got. This was a game announced last E3 and given a tentative date of 2018. E3 marks basically the midway point of the uh, 2018 gaming season since, let's be honest, nobody worth their salt releases stuff in December because they've already missed Black Friday then. So basically E3 is the midpoint. We have heard nothing, not an iota of Yoshi. A game that's supposed to come out this year. 
I don't think anything else really needs to be said here. Unless Yoshi is delayed to 2019, we are going to hear about it at E3. We're probably gonna get a gameplay trailer, we're probably gonna get a whole bunch of cool stuff about it. Probably gonna get, like, the number three slot on Treehouse, because one's going to be Smash, obviously. Two is probably going to be some new 3DS game. Maybe we'll finally get Link's Awakening 3D. That's been rumored for several years now. And three will be Yoshi. I think release-wise, this is probably going to end up filling the Mario and Rabbids Memorial. Random, really good summer game everyone forgets about slot. Where it's going to release in, like, early August. Everyone's going to be like, wow, this is actually really cool. And then we'll flash forward to November and everyone's like, man, why did nobody really buy this game? Maybe because it came out in August. That's really all I have to say about Yoshi. I'm not a giant Yoshi fan. Apparently they removed, renewed the trademark on Yoshi's Island. So that's probably going to be like the tale. And it'll probably be like Yoshi's Cardboard Island or something. Yoshi's Paper Island, something like that. Anyway, number four. Fire Emblem. Remember this game? If you thought Yoshi was bad for not being talked about, this game was announced in January of 2017 for a 2018 release. Just like Yoshi, we haven't heard hide nor hair of this game since. And for the same reason, I don't think much more needs to really be said here. If this game really is on track for a 2018 release, I think it has to be at E3. There's no better time to reveal it. They don't have to give us a lot. Just give us a trailer, reveal the new main character, give us a name maybe, and... I think that's probably what it's going to get, basically. It's going to get a basic trailer, and as much as I'd like it to be 2018, I think this is probably going to be the first game in there that breaks their trend of saying, oh, we're only going to talk about 2018 game. I think this one's just going to get a vague 2019. It's just going to basically be an announcement of, yes, this game is still coming, but we're delaying it. And now, for a word on Bayonetta 3 and Metroid Prime 4. Well, just to say, I don't, I'm not going to say much about them because I don't think they're going to be at E3. I see most, I see both these games as basically probably a latter half of 2019 at this point. Bayonetta 3 probably takes the September-October slot and Prime 4 probably takes the uh, holiday slot. I think probably you throw Pokemon in there somewhere too. Actually, it's because of Pokemon that I slightly am going to change my opinion here. I could see Pokemon... Maybe being the October, September game. Prime 4, I think, is definitely going to anchor next holiday. That feels like the definite holiday game. The return of Metroid Prime. Bayonetta 3, as a result, I see it as kind of in this weird zone where it could come out in October, September, if for whatever reason Gen 8 isn't next year. I could see it potentially even being Spring 2019. If it is spring 2019, maybe we do get a trailer, just a basic story trailer like we're probably getting with Fire Emblem that just then at the end says spring 2019. I think that's basically it. We're actually, I think that basically sums up everything that Nintendo we know is coming, but we don't have anything like a firm date or even details on yet. Probably forgot something, and I'm sure that something comments will be all a buzz about. But anyway, let's get into real speculation hours now with number six, Mario Party. 2018, it's a stacked year suddenly if we are really going to get Smash Bros, Pokemon, and a Star Fox all in probably that August to November post E3 window. And you can throw Yoshi in there too, I think. Mario Party is that it's an easy game. It's made probably by like Nintendo's B or C team. It's a small game, it'll sell decently well, but it's not a huge investment in money and time, and you can basically throw it anywhere you want. You could throw that late August, you could throw it late September, you could throw it in the early part of October, you could throw it in the early, you could throw it a week before their holiday capstone game comes out, and it'll probably sell equally as well as it would anywhere, because it's Mario Party. Also working in this game's favor, its trademark was renewed in Japan recently, which, to renew a trademark, you have to prove you're going to use it. Now, obviously, this is a Wii U era game, and we've got another game that has a 3DS and Wii U era game coming up. Also, Mario Party has Top 100, which came out just last year, so renewing it isn't that big of a stretch. But, who knows? Maybe they decided to renew it now, 
because they have another new game coming out and they're going to announce it at E3. The only question to me is, what form does this game take? The car, it's easy. Nintendo loves it. It's been immensely unpopular with fans, though. Do they go back to the classic formula? Nintendo themselves aren't really fans of the classic four players on the board system, but they did use it for Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, so it's not like they hate it. It's not like they hate the very idea of it, they just don't like it in Mario Party. If the fans don't like the car, maybe they go back to classic. I mean, this is the new era Nintendo. And of course, the third Dark Horse is maybe they just port Top 100 over to the Switch. Or maybe they make a new Top 100. Maybe it's the Mario Party All Mini Games Collection. I mean, it'd be okay if they went back to like Mario Party 1 where you have like the board without stars where it's just how many coins do you have and the mini games give you coins and it helps you win, you know? It'd be like an interesting midway point between all three. Make the little triangle here. It'd be an interesting midpoint at the very least. Anyway, that's enough on Mario Kart. Let's get into number seven and one that I think a lot of people are going to be very hyped and concerned about. Kind of like Pokemon Let's Go. Mario Party. Wait, I just said that. Paper Mario. Paper Mario... It was one of those games that had its trademark renewed along with Mario Party and the others. It also is mentioned by the May 7th leak, which, although it gets a number of things apparently wrong, actually a lot of things, and you should take it with a pretty hefty grain of salt, it did nail that we'd get information on the Nintendo Switches online on May 7th, so it's worth bringing up in this video. It does mention a, Mar it does mention a Paper Mario game. It mentions that it would return to a classic partner gameplay, though, which I'd be stoked for. I mean, that'd be fun. What I want, though, what I personally want from a new Mario, a new Paper Mario, and I'm gonna keep saying Mario Party, I swear. I want a return of badges. Badges, to me, was the core Paper Mario gameplay that I was so sad they ripped out in favor of stickers. Stickers are cool and all, and I mean, the way they did them in Color Splash, it had a little bit of an element of badges still. But I like badges and BP and saying, I want to equip Power Stomp, but to equip Power Stomp, I can't equip Super Hammer or whatever. I want to be able to make those tough choices. And the stickers, they didn't really have it. But honestly, I don't think we're going to get either of that. I think if we do get a new Paper Mario, it's probably going to be another in the Sticker Star Color Splash line of no partners, no badges. You have a book that you open up to show your things, and there's toad collecting and all that. I mean, that's my pessimism talking. This is the new Nintendo, so we can dream. But I don't. I feel like I'm just going to be crushed by the new Paper Mario if we get one. What I do think we'll get with it is it'll probably get a short trailer. Maybe not even that. Maybe we just get a logo, Paper Mario, now in development for Nintendo Switch. It feels like another one of those early 2019 games at this point, And we're, despite Nintendo's claims of only covering 2018, we're starting to load up on 2019 games here. And I feel like that's just because the roster for this year is so strong. And actually, I scroll down, here's another 2019 game. Don't worry, everyone, this is the last 2019 targeted game in my list. Number eight, hashtag AC Switch Waiting Room. That's right, Animal Crossing. I think it's finally time. And the reason for this is, hey, look, it's another renewed trademark. But there's more this time. It's not just a renewed trademark. I know none of the leaks are talking about it. But there's a lot of external tertiary evidence that says, even if it's not at E3, maybe this comes in a summer direct relatively soon. Because the trademark was renewed. In this case, it was renewed separately from the Paper Mario, Mario Party, F-Zero, Star Fox, that whole giant list of trademarks that renewed last month. This is renewed on its own, which tells me maybe they're renewing it for a reason. They also updated their website accidentally. This update... It removed the 3DS and the Wii U sections. Those, are, those were gone in the update. And in their place was a new About section. Changes were reverted the same day, but the fact those came out and the fact those two were removed, I think for a lot of people were like, this feels, this feels like updating a website for uh, announcing a new game. That's why you need an About section. What's this new game about? 3DS, Wii U, those are old hat. We've got a new game now. And honestly, personally... I think this would just plain be a great game for the Switch's playstyle. It's a game where you can pick it up, do like an hour on it, chop down some trees, go to the island, sell your stuff to Nook, 
and you can put it down. You can just go into sleep mode, put it in your dock, go to bed, wake up, do your stuff again, turn it off, put it in there. You know, it's just one of those things that feels like, you know, I can, I can see this. This is definitely a thing that could happen. I think, though, targeting-wise, it is a 2019 game. Probably it's another one that I think is probably spring-targeted, because it's not too hefty, unless they want to really integrate Switch Online, in which case, again, 2019 makes the most sense here. Maybe if they have a Direct right before Switch Online launches, and it's like, here's a Direct featuring all these new games that are going to take full advantage of the Switch's online capabilities, and they just rattle off all these games, and Animal Crossing is in there. I can see it. I, I do think there's a chance it comes at E3, though. Just because it's huge. Contrary to popular belief, Animal Crossing is a big deal. Because that game, it pushed, I think, almost as many 3DS units as Pokemon pushed. Anyway, this video is getting long. How long is it getting? Uh, it's over 20 minutes. Let's move on to third parties here. Number nine. It's going to be like a long list because there's a lot of third parties I'm interested in here. First of all, we know Crash and Insane Trilogy is coming out soon. Nintendo probably plugs that again. Maybe putting... Crash and Smash. I don't know. Spyro Remaster was announced, conspicuously missing a Switch adaptation despite every leak saying it would have one. That feels inevitable. You know what else feels inevitable? Fortnite. I don't like it, but it's probably coming. Let's get into a specific company here, because we're going to run through three very related companies here that I have a vested interest in. Not from, like, investing or anything, but because I love JRPGs. I'm going to get that out there right now. Let's start with Square Enix. We're probably going to get another plug for Octopath Traveler because Square Enix is pushing that thing hard. Final, Sa Final Fantasy XV. It is on everything at this point except the Nintendo Switch. It feels almost like a foregone conclusion that we're going to get it on Switch at E3. Be a great big surprise announcement. It's like, newest Final Fantasy coming to Switch. You didn't think it was possible? It's possible. Speaking of things you didn't think was possible, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Maybe if we get some information from Square Enix about this remake, maybe we get an announcement that it's coming to Switch. If, I mean, they complain that 15 might never come to Switch because the engine is fiercely incompatible. Final Fantasy VII Remake? It uses Unreal Engine. Unreal is what the Switch was built for. I could see it happening if we get FF7 Remake news. We probably won't because I think that game is, what, targeted for 2023 at this point? Oh yeah, speaking of Unreal, you know what other game of Square Enix uses Unreal? Kingdom Hearts. It's been conspicuously missing from a Switch announcement despite everybody and their dog begging Square Enix to do it. And honestly, I'll take them announcing, yes, Kingdom Hearts 3 will come to Switch, but you're gonna have to wait a little while for us to get it ready. So long as you know they announce alongside, oh yeah, but you know, to tide you guys over, here's 1.5, 2.5, maybe even 2.8 coming to the Nintendo Switch. I mean, I'd buy it again. I'd be that guy. I mean, I haven't bought 2.8 yet, but knowing it'd come to Switch, I might buy it on Switch then instead, just to take it on the go. Take it to Pokathon. Now, in the subject of Square Enix Rivals, let's talk about Namco Bandai. I think they have a company behind this. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, they announced back at the N Nintendo Switch reveal, like, not the reveal the first time, but the one where they actually revealed games and stuff for it, that a new, mysterious entry in the Tales of series would be coming to Switch. Since then, we haven't heard hide nor hair of it. Feels about time for it. I mean, maybe it's not new. Maybe it's Zestiria 2, which apparently showed up on the PlayStation 4 shop recently through data mining. Maybe that's coming to Switch. I mean, I'd be fine with it. I love Tales of back in the, like, Symphonia Abyss era. I'd love to see more of those games come to Nintendo. Because I'll admit, I probably should play more Tales of games since I love them so much. Now for Square Enix's other major rival, Atlas. Shin Megami Tensei V. I'm gonna let that sink in for a moment. At E3, you're saying? A mature rated game about gods and demons? And when I say gods and demons, I mean in the Christian sense. At E3? On Nintendo's presentation? Yes. This is the Nintendo, after all, that had a Nintendo Direct where they said multiple times the phrase, fractured but whole. They announced a South Park game on a Nintendo Direct. If they can do that, I think we can see Shin Megami Tensei 5 at E3 on Nintendo's event for it. I think it's possible. I, will it happen? I don't know, but I think it's possible. I also very desperately just want Atlas to have a presence there because I, shall, I very selfishly want them to begin the process 
of bringing the Persona series to Switch. Because I've been an advocate since the Switch was announced that Persona 5 Crimson, which isn't the actual name, but it's the name everyone's using for the FES portable golden style remake that's inevitably going to happen to Persona 5. I want that to come to Switch. I don't care about the PlayStation 4, I don't care about the PlayStation 5, I definitely don't care about the Vita because it's now going to be officially ending support next year apparently. I want it on Switch. I want to be able to take it on the go in the full art style and everything on my Switch. I want to be able to play it on the road to Pokéthon. And I'll accept even them starting small. Because I think Crimson is probably still another year or two off. I'd be fine with even them just saying, Hey, you know what? You know these really old, really kind of weird Persona games? They're called 1, 2, and that other 2 game. Specifically if you aren't a Persona fan. 2 was actually split into 2 games. Innocent Sin and Eternal Punishment. That's why I say 1, 2, and the other 2. I'd be fine with those coming to Switch even. Even if they're just their standard Vita semi-updated versions. Heck, at this point, I'd even be fine with Atlas saying, Hey, you, go rebuy Persona 3 and Persona 4 for the, like, second or third time. I'd do it! I would do it to have those games on the Switch. Even if those games aren't updated in the slightest, and they're still the awkward PS2-era, Vita-era graphics. I'd be fine with it. I just want more Persona in my life. And oh yeah, on that subject, can we maybe get a segment for Persona Q2 over on Treehouse? That was announced last year, and we haven't really seen anything from it yet. I really like it, please, thank you. Hi, Sonic. I don't know if you guys can hear the background music. But, uh, that one Sonic Forces song is playing, which, by the way, I didn't put this in my notes, but... Is it just me, or are we kind of due for another Sonic game? I know we just had Forces, but it feels like we're due, because it's Sonic. And obviously this ties into the May 7th leak, because the May 7th leak said that Sega would be getting up on the Direct and announcing their Sega Classics selection, which would include, to start with, Adventure and Adventure 2, which, again, I'd buy those games yet again, because I could take them on the go and play them on the way at Pokéthon. Are you noticing a trend here? Also in the May 7th leak, Black Ops 4 Battle Royale would come to Switch, but not the main game. Which to me is interesting. We got the confirmation of Black Ops 4 already, which raises an interesting flag on that one. But Battle Royale coming to Switch, if they're really trying to... If they don't care about main game and they were just like, let's make Black Ops 4. Wait, Fortnite's popular. Let's make a Battle Royale and release it on everything. I mean, it's Activision. I hate Activision. I could see it happening. And also, here's kind of like the big overarching thing that I'll be looking at in everybody else's presentation. How many E3 announced third-party games are going to be coming to the Switch on day one? We've always had games where it's like, you know, we're porting this old game to the Switch, or we're going to port this game to the Switch, but it's going to be late. Like Wolfenstein 2, which is apparently coming out in another month or two. I actually didn't even know it had a release date. How many of those games this year at E3, though, are going to get up on stage and say, coming October 20 bajillionth to Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PC and Nintendo Switch. I hope it's a lot, because it's year two. We don't have the excuse of, well, nobody saw this thing coming. Everyone now has seen it coming, and I hope we get... I'll be satisfied if at least 25% of the major AAA announcements get day one Switch support. Less than that, I'm going to be a little leery still. More than that, I'm going to be like... And anyway, one last point on third party is very selfishly, I hope that the fact that FIFA sucked on the Switch doesn't mean that Madden is dead. Because I've always said, you know, two games and I will sell my PlayStation 4. Madden and Persona. I'll kind of throw Kingdom Hearts in there now, I guess, because now I'm hooked on that franchise too, but I think all those have a real chance to come to Switch. I think I have a real chance to still sell my PlayStation 4. EA, don't screw this up. Don't. Blame the players for your sucky game. And now number 10, we're 30 minutes in already, so this is going to be quick. Nintendo Classics, please, please let this be a Netflix-style system where you pay the Switch's online subscription fee and anything in that library you can stream to your console and play anytime you want. They can have an extra fee if you want to download it for offline play and keep it, but I hope that by having the online service, you can stream via internet connection all the games. 
Also, what consoles are we getting at launch? The May 7th leak implied that we'd get, uh, I think it was Game Boy, was that Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or Game Boy Advance, somewhere on that line, would be also available alongside the NES at launch. We haven't seen hide nor hair of that. So I'm curious to know, is it truly just NES, or is Nintendo holding back a Game Boy announcement? Also, will Nintendo commit to when we'll see more consoles added? Because, obviously, with Virtual Console, we had the SNES, the 64, the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advance, the DS... Yeah, the DS was available. It was... Yeah, it was definitely available, yeah, because that's how Lelathon does the DS Zelda games. When are we going to get those consoles? And when are we going to get new consoles? I mean, GameCube support we've been asking for since the Wii U launched. When are we finally going to get GameCube games on our modern system? I mean, I get that they like remakes and all that, but just when? And I mean, for that matter, why are we getting Wii? I mean, now the Wii is two consoles old. I mean, a lot of people with Wiis, their Wiis are breaking down. Mine's breaking down. My GameCube support on the Wii is breaking down too. So I'd like to get those consoles on VC at some point, please. But uh, yeah, that's 10 things. You skip to the end. Here's a rundown of what they were. Number one, Smash for Switch. Number two, the leaks, AKA Let's go Pikachu and Eevee and Star Fox Grand Prix. Number three, Yoshi. Number four, Fire Emblem. Number five, we probably won't see Bayonetta 3 and Prime 4. Number six, Mario Party. Number seven, Paper Mario. Number eight, Animal Crossing. Number nine, the third parties. Number 10, Nintendo Classics. One thing I forgot to mention here that we will almost certainly see, Mario Tennis Aces is probably gonna get another trailer because that comes out, what, a week or two after E3? They've gotta push that. Yeah, got anything else you want to see? Got anything else that you think we'll see? Uh, I'll admit quite selfishly, I don't really read the YouTube comments, but drop one anyway. Maybe you can talk with each other down there. You can hit me up on Twitter, too, at SlowpokeIAGamer, because Twitter is a jerk and won't let me have one extra character to make it is. You can find me on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash slowpokeisagamer, where I am playing right now, uh... On Mondays, it is Super Mario 64 Ocarina of Time by Kaze. It's a great ROM hack, really fun, really challenging too. On Fridays, I'm playing Kingdom Hearts 1 Final Mix in preparation for Kingdom Hearts 3, which, who knows, maybe it'll be on the Switch. Uh, I thought there was other things I wanted to say at the end here, but now I don't remember them. Oh yeah, uh, feel free to drop a subscription if you like this kind of video. If you want to see more stuff of me just, you know, sitting here rambling about what I think Nintendo will do. Maybe I'll do other ones in the future for like, what will Sony do? What will Square Enix do? What do I think about the new Final Fantasy XIV expansion? What do I think about this new WoW expansion? I don't know. If you want to see more of this stuff, drop a like. That's the best way to tell me you like it. It's literally in the name. Anyway, that's all I got. Hope to see you here, Twitter, on Twitch, and... Hope to see you guys watching E3. I'll probably be restreaming it with commentary on my channel unless I get uh, on some person's panel for it. All right, that's all I got. Um, bye bye. Music faded out the perfect time. Uh, ruined everything.